Wednesday, hump day, September 25th. I'm about to get blown. Uh, not in the dirty way, but there's a hurricane coming. Uh, I forget the name of it. And, and it's never good when you get blown and you forget the name. But that's what it is. And speaking of getting blown and forgetting the name, this is a woman that you could probably forget uh, if it was one of those evenings. <laughs> Carolyn Ellison uh, got sentenced 24 months in prison. I think that's a travesty of justice. This woman deserves so much more. Uh, it is also said that Sam Bankman Freed and Diddy are in the same uh, prison. Uh, imagine the stories that they can tell. Unlike Diddy, though, this is the party, the, the woman at the parties uh, that, that Sam Bankman Freed was throwing. So, I mean, which lifestyle would you want? I'm not saying, uh, listen. I may get canceled over this. Who knows? It is what it is. Uh, let's get back to the markets because I'm no good at, at commenting on that stuff. But cues. Okay, we're still in the middle. You still have confirmation. Your Bollinger Bands are cinching up. If I had to guess, I would guess that we move higher. But I go back to this. Okay? This is the year-end target for SPY. We don't have a year-end target for the cues. They're probably out there. But we do, look at that for SPY. And so at all-time highs on SPY, with the targets averaging below where we're at today, I would argue, be patient. I would just be patient. There are bullish reasons to be in the market. Again, I'm 90% invested in the market. I'm 5% out. I'm looking to get that 5% back in. But if the market goes up and I'm not in on that 5%, I'm not, I'm not spanking myself. So, you know, it's just the, the, the patience, mon we're waiting for earnings season and that's what we're waiting for. But until then, we've got confirmation and you're still in a bull market. When you look at the weekly chart of the queues, you can clearly see the MACD is semi resetting, still not down at the oscillator. You're still 11 to 14 points above the oscillator. Okay. The last time we saw that we continued to go up. That was back in 2021 on a weekly. Your, your 50 days still moving up. Your 200 days still moving up. We are in a bull market. Earnings, uh, earnings will probably expand. And you'll probably see us go continue to go up. Doesn't mean you get out. Doesn't mean you sell everything. It means you just be strategic about stuff. Be happy that you, you know, maybe your, uh, your risk tolerance is that 50% is in the market and you're sleeping at night. You still have 50% in the market. If you're down at 20% in the market and 80% and is in cash, you're not doing things right. Again, I would turn it over to VOO and chill or get a financial planner or a financial analyst, somebody that can help you, somebody that's going to guide you in this because you should be in the market. Again, we are in a bull market until we're not. And that's, that's the key. Look at the pullback. We were still in a bull market because the 50 day is still moving up. The 200 day is still moving up. We're still in a bull market. So these stocks are rallying after China. China announced stimulus yesterday. When the number two economy in the world announces stimulus, uh, get ready. Because that's what been, has been what's holding up the U.S. a lot. It's been what's holding up oil. You know, you can uh, look at the, some of the minor stocks. Freeport McNamara went nuts yesterday. Uh, one in our core portfolio, Cleveland Cliffs, was up like 8%. But again, there's opportunities out there. Uh, you can look, look at a lot of these China stocks. Now, I will warn you, a lot of these China stocks like JD, PDD, Lee, uh, XPEV, NEO, even BABA, okay? They are all what I call Caribbean queens. Because it is illegal for a non-Chinese citizen to own Chinese stock. So these are paper stocks that are in the Caribbean. If there is some diplomatic issue with the U.S. and China, China could say, you know what? Those paper stocks, they're no good. So how do you invest in China? You can invest in ETFs that are buying the Hong Kong stocks, not the Caribbean stocks. 
Do your own research. If you don't know what it is, go and call your broker. This is why you have somebody like Fidelity. It's not, you know, you can't call Weeble and ask them. They probably don't know. Fidelity would know. So take a look at these stocks. Again, is China investable? In my mind, I think it's tradable. I don't think that you buy and hold something like BABA. But look at BABA. BABA has been a fantastic play in the algorithm. The algorithm over two years makes you 43% on BABA. You get in and out 31 times, 31 positions. If you bought and held over two years, you're up 13%. Now, when we look at a weekly chart of BABA, you can see it is still below its 200-day. Does it mean you have a, 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 an option to, to play? The, look at the 50-day. It's still negative. We've exploded. When, when an, a, an economy, this could be the 2020 of China. Because remember how much stimulus was in 2020 for the U.S.? And remember the stock market in the U.S.? The world? This could be that play. But there are, there are structural issues in China that might not allow that. Just be aware of that. Now, let's talk about Costco because they have earnings coming up. This was an interesting uh, theory by TrendSpider. A stock split. Are they going to announce a stock split? The stock has run so much. Will they announce a stock split? The weekly chart on here just looks insane. Okay. We talk about this all the time. We talked about the valuation of Costco. For me, it's a little too expensive. A little too expensive. 56 times earnings. When you look at the charting of, of the, you know, we looked at this yesterday. Um, when you look at, uh, let's, we're not going to put, we're going to take that out, but we're going to look at the, um, the PE. Okay. We're going to look at the valuation and we're going to look at the PE of, uh, of Costco because historically look at that one year you've gone from 40 to 50. Okay. You haven't grown your earnings enough to justify your price to earnings has just gone up. Okay. They do have growth. But look at the five-year. You're at an all-time high on five-year. Look at the 10-year PE. You're at an all-time high. I would urge you, if we pull back after earnings and they announce a stock split, I would urge you wait three days and then buy Costco if you want Costco. The other option would just be to buy Walmart or Target. If you go down here and you look at the, the, the valuation of, of P, uh, PE of Walmart, it's 33. The forward is tw 29. Uh, Target, it's 16 and 14. If you if you shop at Target, go and buy Target stock. It's just a better option. It, I don't know that it's going to outperform, but in the quant, Target is a, a strong buy. So be aware. I think this is uh, still coming up. Hey, here's October is right around the corner for Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Remember I bit with options? Bitcoin. We don't have, you know, for Bitcoin, for, for the seasonality, look at that. Over the last 11 years, 80% win rate in October, okay? Average return, 18%. That could be huge. That could be enormous. How do you want to play this? Well, I played it in a few ways. IBIT, IBIT is the, the ETF. For uh, Bitcoin, I like this one. I think it's one of the largest market caps on the, uh, the ETF platform. Now, the algorithm over eight months makes you 10%. I would argue this is one that you just buy and hold. Don't size into this one crazily. There is also two new ETFs that are um, leveraged against MicroStrategy. I have said this before. I think MicroStrategy is a leveraged ETF with Bitcoin. I think this is a leveraged ETF. The algorithm over 24 months makes you 983% versus 651% if you bought and held. You'd be perfectly happy with 651% over two freaking years. Okay, MicroStrategy, the algorithm, it has 24 positions. So once per month, 983%. It got you in here at 125 right here on September 10th. You have two new leveraged ETF, MSTU and MSTZ. Both are leveraged against MicroStrategy. If you don't know what that is and you don't know, this is trading. These are not buy and hold. Those have huge fees. They also will go up, two, I think, two times against MicroStrategy. But 
iBit is the buy and hold. MicroStrategy is the 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 trade, the 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 kind of swing trade. MSTU, MSTZ, those are the day trade ones. Okay, that's what you have to worry about. But October, that's huge. Over the last decade, eighty percent win rate, and we're it's September twenty fifth right now. Now this is pretty wild. Uh, Amazon charging towards new all time highs. This is the cheapest the stock has been in years from a PE. We just went over Costco. Let's look at Amazon. It's been it's the cheapest it's been in years. Okay, Quant says it's a hold. If we go to the valuation on this one, it's 41. That is the cheapest it's been in years. Let's go to the chart and let's look at the metrics again. Let's look at the valuation of this one. If we go and we look at PE and we get out the price return and we update this chart, take a look at that, how it's going down. Look at how that is reducing instead of rising like Costco. Okay, the one thing you have to know about Amazon is that from a, a chart standpoint, when it gets, it's at 193 right now. When it gets to 200, Bezos has said he will sell. I have said this before. Anything under this 188, which was resistant, it hasn't held up as support. But anything below that 188 should be a buy for you for long term. Now, am I buying right now? The RSI is at 72. The 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 MACD is uh what? It's four points above the 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 oscillator. It's a little bit crazy and expensive right now. It's high. But if you're, you're if you're looking for like three five years, I don't think it's nuts. I don't think it's nuts. Now Nvidia, we we saw a bunch of insider sales from Jensen Wong. He said he's done. He said he's done selling. He sold a seven hundred and thirteen million dollars of stock. He said he's done. It's been through that that crazy rally that we saw. Now is Nvidia done running? I don't think so. Look at NVIDIA. Morgan Stanley expects NVIDIA's Blackwell production could reach 450,000 chips just in Q4, resulting in revenue of more than $10 billion. That's huge. So let's take a look at the chart of NVIDIA. And then we'll go over and we'll look at the, the, the valuation, the PE. Take a look at this. I've said this before. I think 100 is your support level. As you get down there, you buy it. It's at 120. That has been a recent resistance level. It's not a long-term resistance level. If we just put a line at 120 and you look right here, it presented itself. We're going to go down to about 120 right there. Presented itself as a few days of resistance right there back in June. Okay. A few days of support here in June. And then it had some resistance trying to get back up there in July. It didn't. It lost it. And then when you were here in August, August, it held it as a support. Then it lost it. And it went down to 100. You're using it as resistance now. So do you want to buy it? Let's take a look at the valuation of NVIDIA. Because the PE of NVIDIA, we're going to select metrics and we're going to go to uh, valuation. And we're going to say PE. And we're going to take out price return. And we're going to look at the, the valuation. Look, it's going down. So in a market like this, find the PEs and the value play. Costco is not a value play. doesn't mean that it won't go up. They could announce some crazy stuff. But again, I just gave you some stocks that are trading at their cheapest PE level. And they are high flyers. These are ones that should continue to go up. Look at NVIDIA. Okay, the quant says it's a hold. Why? The valuation. The PE's at 42. Is that crazy? No, we just went over. It has been higher. The peg ratio, because the growth is so good, is 1.16. We saw that up at four for Costco. Now, Wall Street says that NVIDIA's price target is 148. That's 23% from where we are today. The 52-week high, 140. So it's got it in there. It's got it in there. So between the additional revenue and, and that Jensen's not buying, I think it's bullish. But do I, th do I know? No. I'm just you know, giving you some information. Now, here, Roblox, quietly. Roblox has gone pretty crazy. Okay, finding acceptance above the all-time high. VWAP 
is a step in the right direction for Roblox. Roblox is part of the core portfolio, and I've said this before. And when it's under 40, you buy it. When it's over 40, you sell it. It's gotten over that 44 resistance level that we talked about. Now, when you look at a weekly on this one, it's just at that 44 level. You can see how it's traded up there for a few days and then come back down. I would wait for it to come down. If I just extend this out, remember, I said this is the trading uh, range that we were looking at. If I just extend this out, let me see, how do I do that? There we go. Extend that out there. You can see it's pretty clear. Uh, we're going to put that right there. That between 25 and 40, the problem is that as this company becomes more mature, makes more revenues, it could uh, continue to go up. And so I would be looking at about 50 to 54 as the next leg up where it would put 40 as, as the support level. Okay, maybe 44 is the support level. But until you get up there, there's no reason to buy this one. No reason to get, uh, you know, some uh, FOMO. So Roblox is in the core portfolio. If you want the core portfolio, you simply go over to Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. And this is free. Okay, it's on Savvy Trader. It's on Savvy Trader. You can look at the core portfolio. It's 35 positions. And you might say, well, why do I want that portfolio? You know, nobody charges for it. Well, these are names that probably shouldn't get you hurt over a certain amount of time, okay? We can take a look at the, the core performance against SPY, against the S&P 500. Year to date, SPY is up, uh, let's say, uh, 30, uh, let's say 32%. And uh, it, you know the, the core portfolio is up 33%. So it's doing well. Let me just refresh this real quick because this chart isn't updating with what I want. Let's compare it against SPY. There we go. SPY is up uh, at the end of the year. It is a uh, year to date. It's up 20%. And the daily stock pick core portfolio is up 33%. It's 100 shares. This is not a managed portfolio. So it is not optimized. But you can see how 35 names. You could but you know, it's a million dollar portfolio. Okay, say you just had, you know, $100,000. You can buy one share, one share of each. You don't have to buy all of them. You buy 10 shares of the ones you like. There's, there's a lot of stocks in here that are good, okay? There's XLK, there's QQQ, there's Lilly, there's United Healthcare. There's a lot of stocks in here. You can do it total return since I bought it. Look at the, the losses. You've got Boeing, you've got Tesla, you've got Pepsi, you've got Occidental Petroleum, you've got Cleveland Cliffs. Those are the only negatives. The rest, over uh, about a year and a half, they are all positive. So again, look at that that core portfolio, and you don't have to pay to, to follow it. Now, if you're a subscriber to TrendSpider and you signed up through me right here, this top one, and, and you have TrendSpider, TrendSpider is 50 bucks a month. You see my four-hour algorithm on there. I talked about that with some of those uh, stocks like Tesla that we're going to talk about, like um, you know Roblox, like NVIDIA, Amazon, all of those are in the four-hour algorithm. You can do any stock that you want in the four-hour algorithm. You get it by signing up through TrendSpider with, through my link. You get the core portfolio. It's up here in the right-hand side. It is constantly on my screen. And I don't charge you for this, but the core portfolio are just 35 names that I don't think that you can get hurt trading around or buying. Okay? Simple as that. So find your strategy, find the way you do it. Now, ServiceNow uh, is, is a stock that I wanted. I own CRM, but ServiceNow is one that I wanted. This was interesting. Okta and ServiceNow may see volatility after the FBI uh, rated Carasoft from Piper Sandler. Now, ServiceNow is down 2%. Let's take a look at the chart because we're going to go into some chart stuff now. Uh, ServiceNow... Uh, this one has been on a run ever since it got you in here at 841. It got you in here at 763. Nice 3% gain. Okay. That 841, you're still positive on it. I like this one. I like service now. When I when I looked at service now, we can go back to here. When I looked at service now and, and I said, okay, service now is a software. That that's essentially what it is. It's a software platform. And I own, you know, Oracle is in here, Fortinet is in here. Um, there's a bunch of other ones, but service now, when I looked at it, their biggest competitor, I believe is, um, is, is Salesforce. And when I, I selected symbols and I went to CRM, I've owned CRM for, I guess about four or five years now, somewhere in that neighborhood. So let's just say five years. I should have owned service now. 
Salesforce is up 77%. ServiceNow is up 258%. Now, year to date, Salesforce is only up 2%. ServiceNow is up 30%. Is, is, is the, uh, the, the valuation of ServiceNow good? No. You know, you can take a look at it. 73, 66. The peg ratio down to two because they're growing so fast. When you look at peers, uh, CrowdStrike, I want ServiceNow. So we're going to edit symbols. I'm going to take this out. Take this out, take that out, take that out, and we're just going to look at a CRM. And we're going to say, okay, both of these services. We're going to take a look at this. You can see the charting. You can see that uh, ServiceNow is a strong buy in the uh, Wall Street. Uh, CRM is a buy. And you look at the, the quant ratings right there. And let's go look at the PE, the valuation, 66 for ServiceNow. CRM is 26. You know, the, 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 actual, uh, the actual market cap uh, 190 billion for ServiceNow, 258 billion. So, service Salesforce is double the size of this. I, I, the performance. Look at the performance. ServiceNow has blown them away. So, it's one that I wanted to get into. I saw that one. I said, you know what? Maybe this is an opportunity. Keep an eye on this. Okay, it's got to come back down. It's been a high flyer. It probably will come down to the 840s. At that 840s, that might be a good entry for you. Now, there was an ETF that I saw yesterday, uh, a commodity, sugar. Your boy is addicted to sugar. Why am I not in this ETF? This is the sugar fund. It has gone. The algorithm got you in on September 16th at $11. It's at 13 That's huge for an ETF like this. You take a look at this, and it's been going nuts. Look at how sugar has been going up. This is a weekly chart. And it's below its 200-day, and it's just getting back above there. Interesting. Interesting. Again, commodities, you can trade all this stuff. Um, so let's talk about SMCI. Because SMCI uh, in the quant just went to a buy. I got my email from Seeking Alpha this morning, and it said, hey, one in your core portfolio, SMCI, got upgraded from a, a hold to a buy. Is this one a buy? I'd argue that that is probably not a buy until Supermicro throws out their 10K. That's what we're waiting for. Remember, there was a short uh, short report that said that their, uh, their, their finances, they're manipulating their finances and they're, they're fraudulent. This is how it became delisted last time. It's the same playbook. I don't know that it makes sense. I don't know the reality of it. I don't know, but I do know Wall Street their average price target from Wall Street is seven hundred and fifty dollars. That's sixty one percent where you're uh, above where you're trading today. The valuation we talked about PE levels. This PE isn't crazy. The profitability is the issue. Okay, the sector's making forty nine percent gross profit margin. SMCI is down to fourteen percent. That's the issue. You know, they're levered free cash flow. They're losing year over year, twirling twelve months, eighteen percent. That's an issue. So the profitability is the issue with this. And part of that is because they're going up against players like Dell who can slash the prices. Dell is a strong buy. So make your pick which one you want. But the information technology hardware, this is Dell. Seagate is the number one from the quant. It's an interesting one. Again, find your opportunities in here. Uh, let's talk about some charts now in TrendSpider from the core portfolio because Tesla is slowly approaching the $260 resistance level. It's 260 bucks the resistance level in Tesla. Here's Tesla in the four-hour algorithm. Uh, you can see it had a buy here at 220 That 260 level, how did I come up with that 260 level? Well, when you pull it back here, you can see, I think since July of last year, um, here on the four hour algorithm, it's hit it four times. You can see July, um, June of last year. We can pull back that back that one. June, it kind of just fluttered around there. Didn't hold that one as, as a, a support, but that's resistance one where it, it just hit it. Boom, bounced off it. Support, uh, resistance two, uh, in December bounced off. It came right back here. Resistance three at, at, in July. Boom, bounce, and even on the bounce back up, this one got to 253, bounce down. So as it approaches that 260 level, you want to make sure that you understand this. Now, if you want to trade it in the four-hour algorithm, this performs solidly. Over 24 months, Tesla makes you 169% and 23 positions for the last 24 months. 
If you just bought and held this stock, you're down 15%. This is not one that I would say you buy and hold. The valuation is crazy. We talked about valuation just before with all these. Let's look at Tesla. You do have the Elon Musk hype in this one. Okay, you have robo taxis coming up. The valuation is nuts. The PE, I talked about not wanting to buy um, uh, Costco at 50. This is 108. You even look at their peg ratio, which includes growth. It's at seven. So this is a, now it's valued as a tech company. It's thrown into consumer discretionary. I would argue it's a tech company. The tech in my car is uh, I just got actual smart summon. Uh, it's ASS is the symbol. <laughs> uh, I got it last night. I haven't played with it. I am not trusting actual smart summon in a freaking Costco parking lot. But you can go out there and look at this. Three times the stock reacted to oversold territory on the RSI. It's up. It's up here in overbought territory. And every time it's gotten back up here, it's come back down. So expect this one to come. Now, you might say, well, Wall Street loves this one. Wall Street doesn't love this one. Their average price target, 208. It's uh, 18% below. And there's 47 analysts that cover this. Now, can't get over the profitability. 17% gross profit margin. That's huge for an auto company. Huge for an auto company. So just another core portfolio one that has come up, Netflix. This one is over uh, $700. This one went nuts yesterday. got to $720. We talked about this one a lot. That $700 mark was resistance. Is it support? It hasn't pulled back and shown support yet. I would be taking profits. I never have, have uh, disconnected my Netflix subscription. But the reality of Netflix is that... Um, hold on. I have to get the camera. You guys will sit through this. We're going to get the camera to follow us. Oh, stop. I'm going to get the camera. There we go. The camera's going to follow me now. And now it'll follow me. There we go. <laughs> Netflix. Yeah, I'm not going to hit pause on that one. And if you're watching the video, you, you'll get it. But here, um, uh, Netflix, 680, the algorithm got you in. You made 134% on 25 positions over 24 months. You bake 193, buying and holding. If you take a look at this long-term chart, where 700 come from? It comes from the November 2021 highs. Okay, we have uh, traveled all the way back up there. You've had some downs in here, but you've traveled all the way back up there. Your 50-day, moving positive. Your 200-day, moving positive. Your Bollinger Bands have cinched up. If I had to guess, I would guess we're going higher. But let's take a look at the valuation of Netflix. The valuation is a little bit stretched. The valuation is an F in the quant. Okay, the quant says hold. It's 45. The forward is 37. You look at the peg ratio, which includes growth, and it's 1.3. You got the ad tier. You got them cracking down on passwords. You have a lot of good things happening with this uh, stock. So I don't want you to get out totally. Trim it. At 718, trim it. Don't get out totally. You know, you know, trim it by 10%. As it gets down closer to 700, and we see that support level at 700, because the valuation, while it's a little bit stretched, it's not crazy if they continue to grow. Now, another core portfolio stock that seems to be putting in a nice little bottom here is Qualcomm. This is another chip trading below its 200-day. You're seeing that that 165 level is where the algorithm has gotten you in a couple of times. You're trading at 167. Now, you take a look at the weekly on this one, and we're still above that 200-day. You're using that 50-day as support. Bollinger Bands are still super wide. Your resistance level will be 193. You didn't hold that. So it's still going to be resistance. That comes from your 2021 highs. Okay? You had the golden cross. So I wouldn't expect this one to go down too far. But when you look at the, 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 the valuation of this one, it might be a little bit stretched. The valuation C, growth is a D. The growth is the issue on this one. This is how you use Seeking Alpha Premium to look at this stuff. The growth, revenue growth year over year, down negative 3.2%. A chip company that's losing it. They are trying to diversify themselves. That's why they uh, approached Intel and said, hey, uh, we may want to buy you. Look at the valuation. A again, the peg ratio, it's 1.62. That's not super high. The PE only at 16. 
So again, you want to take a look at these companies. The core portfolio is out there for you. Uh, it, it is an interesting one. Uh, Micron. Micron earnings uh, reports after the bell. Earnings will be the semiconductor giant will beat estimates. I found this interesting. I found this super interesting. This bottom uh, bottom line in this article. Now you can read about Micron, what's expected, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of issues with this company, including inventories, including profitability. But when you take a look at this, this is what's interesting. Over the last two years, Micron has beaten earnings per share estimates 75% of the time and beaten revenue estimates 63% of the time. What's been the stock reaction? We'll go and take a look at the chart. But the, this is the earnings surprise. Okay. Eight per eight, eight over the last two years, eight beat, earnings per share beats, seven, only one revenue miss, only one. When you look at the quant in this one, it's a strong buy. Okay, it's it's been a strong buy since about 89. Is it 94 right now? When we look at Wall Street, what does Wall Street say it's worth? They say it's worth 147. There's 37 analysts that cover this one. But they again, there are other issues with Micron. It's not like, oh my God, it's so low, it's going to get uh, you know driven up. No, the algorithm has you in here at 88. Okay, the algorithm over two years, 24 months, makes you 85%. Buying and holding makes you 81%. So if you wound up buying up here at 135 and you didn't get out, you know, at, with the loss, that's because you don't have the algorithm. Get the freaking algorithm. If you bought, uh, you know, uh, here at 111 and you had this 19, nice 19% gain and you held on to it, that, and you didn't have the algorithm. The algorithm can help you. That's why it's there. I don't know what Micron's going to do, but when we look at the weekly on this one, you can clearly see the 200 days, it's 77. I wouldn't put it past if Micron misses it coming back to 77. It's possible. It's been beaten up. Do I want to hold on to this one? Well, the algorithm got you in at 88 and it hasn't gotten you out. So if you got in at 88, because look at the Bollinger Bands, they cinched up. Look at the nine day. You have confirmation above that. Okay, the Bollinger Bands are expanding up. My guess, if I had to guess, is we'll continue up. But the RSI is high at 60. You're right at the oscillator. Could it go down? Absolutely. What did it do last time on earnings? You were at, what, 136 on earnings? You went all the way down to 88. What did it do on the previous earnings? Previous earnings in March 20, you gapped up from 96 all the way to 107. Where are you trading today? 94. 94. Could see a nice little surprise there. So let's talk about scans because uh, scans, what I do uh, provide you in TrendSpider is the ability to find four-hour entries on uh, four-hour algorithm entries. I give you all the scans and, and, and everything, a watch list, all that stuff. Walmart, okay? This says enter at 69. This is another entry, okay? It just won't say there because it never got you out. Got you in right before earnings, gapped up, and you're at $80 right now. Walmart has another leg up going, Tex, um, Te Terex Corporation. So this is from the watch list. The, the Daily Stack Pick watch list that is in only in TrendSpider, it is compiled uh, between Motley Fool, between Seeking Alpha, and other things that I do. This is a proprietary watch list that I provide to you. There's a ton of names in here, uh, and it's good. Here is one that performs really well in the algorithm. Okay, you make 130% versus if you bought and held two years ago, you're up the 63%. The MACD, right on the oscillator. The RSI, no man's land at 51. You're coming up on earnings. It got you in here at 51. You're at 53. You got a juicy little gap up here at 57. Terex Corporation. Again, you can do all of this with the newsletter, which is free, and uh, and and TrendSpider. Uh, this is ARM, ARM Holdings. Uh, it got you in here at 129. It's another leg up. You have positive on the nine day. You're trading between this 174 and 99. It's trading at 145 right now. Would have been nice to get in at that 129. But again, the algorithm makes you 213% versus 154%. This has only been out for 12 months. So if you bought and held this, you made uh, 154%. If you use the algorithm to trade in and out in 12 months, it's 10 positions. You win five times. But your average win is 37%. Okay. Adobe, which is probably, I saw Jim Labenthal yesterday. He bought a bunch of Adobe. 
Adobe is probably one of the few that's going to monetize AI. 526, 53, 23. Now, you make 41% on this. If you bought and held, you made 78% over 24 months. Do you want to buy and hold? For me, I'm not an Adobe subscriber. I don't use the service. I like Adobe. I'm fine making 41%. Do I need to make 78%? No, but I want to find out how to sleep at night and make 41% over 24 months. CTSH. I think this is from the NASDAQ. Cognizant. Okay, 7647. This one doesn't perform as well in the algorithm. But if, if you're interested in Cognizant, then you can get this one. You know, one that uh, does trade within a range. I was just going over this one. Electronic Arts. Electronic Arts, it makes you 9% in the algorithm. It makes you 17% if you buy and held. Now, look at how low that MACD is down there. The last time the MACD was down here, you were at 127. You ran all the way up to 150. Okay, you're at 141 right now, the buy-in, right before their earnings. Their earnings are coming up. The RSI down at 42. If we take a look at a weekly chart on this one, look at that range. Okay, you're at the top of that range. Is this going to be a multi-year breakout? Or is this just going to pull you all the way back to 125? I don't know. I don't know enough about EA. I don't know enough about the fundamentals. If you want to know about the fundamentals of EA... Go over to seek, go over to uh, Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Daily Stock Pick. Click on that second link. That second link is Seeking Alpha Premium. You get a free seven-day trial. Go and look up EA. Okay, that's how you use these tools. The last chance to secure a rate, October 1st, the rate goes up. Uh, but it is. You can lock in your price increases to $299. Uh, I don't know what it is before that. I think it's like 2 something but I save you $25 off, you get a free seven-day trial. Again, the quant rating is uh, beats the market. Now, say you don't want to do any of this stuff, and for some reason you're listening to this podcast, but you just want to be hand-fed a portfolio. That's where Alpha Picks comes in. Yes, you can follow the core portfolio. You can do what you need to do by just trading these names, and most likely you can keep, uh, keep ahead of QQQ and stuff. But if you just want a, a, a proven um, you know, a portfolio, Alpha Picks. It's the third link on Linktree. Alpha Picks right here. How do I know it's good? Look at the performance. It's just performance based. 114% versus the S&P at 38%. It's two stocks, one on the first, one on the 15th. They alert you when to sell. That's the difference. Motley Fool is a junk portfolio. They have stocks in there that they've held on to since 2000. Of course, you're going to show huge growth. And of course, you, you know, if you pick the right stocks, you're going to beat the S&P. It wasn't that hard. I did it with Apple. I did it with Microsoft. I did it with um, Amazon. I did it with Netflix. I did it with Tesla. So all of those stocks, they're in the Motley Fool portfolio. It's nothing great. This, it, I can tell you, the last like five or six picks, uh, I didn't even know what they were. I had no clue what they were. Now, if you want, uh, you can go to Monday's podcast right here. And, and newsletter, and I go over uh, two of the picks on Mondays. And the newsletter's free. By the way, if you're not subscribed to the newsletter, it's dailystockpick.substack.com. It is free. The weekend, I do video courses on, on educational stuff, on how to trade, uh, some of the technicals on the charts that I use, things of that sort, some stocks that I'm looking at. But yeah, it's free. So go and pick it up. Again, you know, if you want anything and you want to support the podcast, it's all on Linktree. L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Daily Stock Pick. Um, if you want, you know, Earnings Hub has more uh, stuff on Micron. Micron. I love Earnings Hub. Uh, if you have any questions, you can hit me up on the email here. Uh, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. and fears.